Good morning. Uh, okay, this is the gyro bee, which uh, usually has a uh, Rotex, about a 60 horsepower 582 engine on it. Uh, first thing you find is that you cannot pre-rotate to above about 150 before you release the bake and start rolling. Uh, you can see that was an attempt which wasn't a crash, but it was a hell of a spin. So back to the uh, runway, or the, this is Merced Municipal Airport, uh, runway 12, as you can see. Okay, so now we've started off again. We've got it up to 150. We're trying to accelerate to pick up the rest of the rotor RPM in order to lift off. Uh, typically, this machine lifts off at about 45 miles an hour. So, uh, the other problem you see right there is there's a bug in the sim which will completely kill the rotor. Just drops out sometimes. Uh, Suddenly you have no rotor RPM, which is technically impossible with a rotating mass that big. Now we're back up to 150. We're slowly accelerating, not massive accelerating. Now we're up to about 50 miles an hour, 55. And you can see the rotor finally decides, okay, I'm gonna operate like a normal rotor. Picked up, uh, and we're off and flying. And the one thing you'll notice right off the bat uh, if you watch the instruments, is the, the um, altimeter was incorrectly set. Uh, a lot of them, you just tap the button and it picks up the local, the current uh, barometric pressure and the right altitude. Uh, this one does not work that way. Uh, the next thing you'll notice about the instruments is that the rotor speed, which is the dial on the lower left it has both the RPM for the engine, which right now is somewhere around 5,000 RPM, but the rotor RPM never gets above about 250 max, 250. That's just barely enough rotor RPM to fly. Uh, it should be running in the 300s to 320, at least 300. That would be acceptable. Uh, 340, 350 would be even better. Uh, so anyhow, we're circling around here. We took off to the south. Circling. We're going back north now. We're going to fly around and see uh, where we're at. According to the altimeter, we're uh, approaching about 850. We're about 850 right now. But keep in mind that we were at a minus two or three hundred when we took off so we're actually if, if this were real would be probably at about a thousand feet so anyhow I'm just kind of getting used to the feel I've flown this one several times but it's always been difficult to take off to get that little trick the right combination as is true with all real gyros is this one uh, a good one to practice with no because it doesn't really emulate the true characteristics of a gyro B. Uh, normally a gyro B you would be able to tip the thing up and balance it on the, the mains about 32 to 35 miles an hour, then increase the throttle, lift off nicely at 42 to 45, and it would fly pretty normally. They're pretty decent little gyrocopters. Again, they uh, don't have a uh, horizontal stabilizer, so that's not a good thing. Although this one shows a horizontal stabilizer, which may have been a modification, uh, could be an after, after bill modification or a later bill. Anyhow, we're going to turn around. We're going to attempt to land back here, back at uh, Castle. I mean, not Castle, but Merced Municipal. Anyhow, uh, I'll shut up here for a minute and we'll see what's happening.
Okay, that was pretty much a normal landing. Almost realistic. The unrealistic part about it was is that you would not come to a full stop uh, instantly like it did. And then again, when if you immediately threw in some throttle and took off, I had what I attempted to do here. Uh, it got to 80 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden it decided, oh, the rotor's not turning anymore, and quit. And so that's where I stopped here. Now I pre rotated again. Now suddenly it goes from like 50 RPM to 250, attempts to take off, but it's not taking off because we don't have enough forward speed to keep us in the air. And one would hope that it would uh, really stay upright like this, but realistically if you set it down like we just did here you would be uh, eating dirt <laughs> so anyhow we're going to roll back to the field here and uh, take off actually incorrectly we're going to be taking off uh, downwind and uh, which would not be the correct way you'd want to take off upwind uh, but in the simulator, you can do a lot of stuff that's not normal. Uh, I'm not saying a downwind takeoff is impossible. It's just something you shouldn't do if you have a choice. Uh, anyhow, we're back at the south end of Minnesota Municipal Airport here. This is our runway, it would be called designated runway 30. As you will see, yep, there's runway 30. And I am uh, rolling up here. I'm going to pre rotate again or attempt to pre rotate to get it up. Yep, you can see right now we're down there. And somewhere I click in the pre rotator here. There we go. Got some engine RPM up. Obviously, clicked in the pre rotator because the rotor RPM is coming up. But I realized that unless you start rolling at about 150 RPM you don't get it, it'll kick to that funny kick out thing so anyhow, now we're doing it we're picking up some speed here and it did, it's made it past so we're actually flying now at about 30 miles an hour which is about where you'd bounce on the mains but I push your nose down and yep, slowly now we're at 30 no, that was 40. I'm sorry. Excuse me. That was 40. So this would be realistic. Uh, again, the rotor RPM is not where it should be. It should be closer to 300 than it is to 250 or whatever that little needle is indicating there. Anyhow, uh, I think the next part is we fly over towards Castle. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyhow, I'll be quiet here and we'll let it fly. Uh, one of the things I think I do try in here is a vertical loop, which again, don't ever even think about trying on any kind of gyro. The only one I know that was ever possible then was maybe uh, an old Picarin if you had tons and tons and tons of forward airspeed and got to enough to, to pull, it or pull it over. But some of the simulators you'll see do it quite easily. They do rolls, barrel rolls, they do vertical splits. So those I've crossed off the list as being just junk toys. Not real, not even close to being the real thing simulation. Uh, so anyhow, we're... Oh yeah, we're approaching Castle now. Uh, Speed's realistic, rotor RPM not quite high enough, all the rest of the gauges seem to be normal. Uh, the tilt on the blades is not realistic either. So here you see a flyby. You see it flying off just over the horizon there. Anyhow, we're going to turn back and head towards the castle run. See, it says we're at 2,300 feet, which that looks about.
about right for 2,300 feet in relationship to the ground. Uh, again, remember that the altimeter is off by about a negative 3,400, somewhere in there. So now we're cutting the throttle back and letting it come back down. Uh, and it is doing what you would normally expect. Uh, airspeed is respectable. This might even really fast. I don't know if this thing for real probably would fly under part 103. You could probably sneak it by because it only has a five gallon gas tank. And as long as you can keep it under uh, 62 knots or 62 miles per hour here, you're probably going to get away with it. So I'm not sure if 62 is exact or it's 55 miles an hour, but it's, I think it's 50 knots or 60 knots, something like that. Anyhow, we're coming in here. This is going to be a pretty normal approach. Uh, I'll shut up for a minute. Southwest headed back towards uh, uh, Merced Municipal. This is Highway 99. We're crossing over here. And pretty much now at about 11.30 is Merced Municipal Airport. And we're dropping down in altitude. But notice the speed we're going at. We're doing 105. Here's where I try to do a vertical uh, flip, and it worked. Couldn't do that for real. 
don't even try it, don't even think about it. But it's fun to try in the simulator because that separates the, the real capable simulators, the realistic simulators that are worth using for real practice from the other ones. You wouldn't have been able to do that, but I probably was. That's why I had that speed up. I was diving to get it. Could you get that speed in a dive? Yes, you could. Uh, but would it be safe? No, it wouldn't be. Uh, especially for a part 103, which is not rated for anywhere near that kind of airspeed. Uh, that's the other thing. We know that this one's not really intended to be 103 because it has 100 miles an hour VNA velocity not to exceed. That's what the VNA is. Yeah, now it's back flying about 40 miles an hour, which is pretty much normal. It's climbing a little bit. we got a little over 5,000 RPM, which would be normal. And for some reason, I got these videos out of whack over here. Don't know what this is. This was I was trying to take off from Castle. This probably should be the reverse here. In fact, I may go back and reverse them. We'll see how this one ends. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is by Castle. Anyhow, again, you couldn't really do this. If you were tearing off across this, you'd be just waiting to commit suicide. And you notice that what's happening here, even though I've got forward speed, I've got the rotor tilted back, it should be kicking up. But instead, it's just flopping and uh, spinning around here. There we go, let's do a full spin, caused by having too much throttle like locking the rotor brake. Anyhow, this one rated as a uh, worthwhile thing. No. Toy? Yes. Fly? See? No skies upside down. See? It's the whole, it's got a lot of problems, this particular sim. So anyhow, on to the next one. Do I rate this one? No. Does pass. X. Don't use. Forget it. Don't even bother. Okay, this is the Monarch Butterfly, and not a bad-looking little thing. Uh, does it perform okay? Rotor doesn't react. The only thing that reacts is the rudders. Gauges are just stuck up in there, so you can tell it's an incomplete project somebody started. Uh, does have rotor brake. Does have a rotor, free rotor, uh, so on and so forth. But you can tell it's just something somebody... Started, never finished. Not unlike a lot of real airplane projects. So anyhow, we're uh, pre-rotating here, getting up some speed. Looks like it's up there, but the minute you release the brake, it auto-gyrates, spins under the thing because I don't have any forward motion. We'll try it again. Uh, you can see there goes the engine RPM. And come on, rot pre rotate, pre rotate. That's the gauge in the, right in the middle and the bottom there. Any second there we go, pre rotating. Okay, we're at 200, no, we're at 50, looks like 150. About 150, it starts spinning around. So is it worthwhile? It's one of those ones you probably, if you tried enough times, and released it and started getting some forward airspeed alive, get your airspeed alive, you might get it off the ground. I think I have gotten this one off the ground before. But for the purposes of this little comparison, is it any good? Nope, nada, negative, nix, whatever language you want to use does start going out here. Looks like it's going to try to fly, but nope. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And this is what happens. Not a happy feeling. OK, 
Okay, I'll be quiet here and let you read what it's saying. This is an MT-03. Might slow that down. It's a little bit hard to read that fast. Anyhow, MT-03 from Autogyro, Germany. Uh, fairly nice uh, graphics. It does show a fairly nice 914, or actually a 912, maybe. It doesn't look like it has the turbo on it. Uh, does fly pretty good, doesn't like a lot of them, doesn't show the articulation of the rotor, which you'll see later. The one I'm going to recommend does. Uh, nice set of gauges, uh, has an interesting uh, pilot, uh, actually shows his legs in there, which mine does not. Mine is the ELL3. You can see his hand on the throttle. See him moving around there. Uh, so that part's pretty realistic. So I can say whoever did the graphics spent some time doing it. It has the, the oops where it's got the sky at the bottom of the screen where they didn't really finish the, the thing the way they should have. And uh, anyhow, uh, I'm going to be quiet for a second here and we'll see if we can get this thing off the ground. nicely. Uh, pretty realistic. Uh, not unlike a real one. A little bit faster speed than you normally would take off. It should lift off oh, somewhere around 45. Should start to lift off. Those get light about 45. Should lift off about 50, 55. Uh, the recommended climb speed for this one is uh, 62 miles an hour, which is right in there with the Magni. You can see it flies pretty stable, uh, acts pretty normal. It's, uh, I would actually use this one if I was learning to fly in a uh, MT-03. Uh, like I say I, in the credits earlier, the title rolled in. I did actually fly one of these at El Mirage this last September, and it, uh, it's a fairly nice flying plane. The only drawback that I have, and that's because I've been training in Magnes, is it does not have a castoring nose wheel, which means you really have to be more on your toes when you land and not let that nose wheel touch down early. Uh, you shouldn't do that on any gyro, but it's especially critical on the ones like the uh, auto gyros where you got to keep that nose wheel in the air until you're almost to a full rolling stop. Uh, otherwise, you'll ever get some surprises, as the uh, FAA has noticed. The only type certified gyro in the United States today is the uh, Caldas, or no, the Cavalon which is the enclosed auto gyro high-end one. And they've had several rollovers on those since they've type certified them, uh, even before that. Uh, we're coming in for our first landing here. Uh, I'm not close enough. And as you can see, that was not the way to land. Although, the old rule is, any landing you can walk away from is a good one. So anyhow, we got back onto the, the runway here, accelerated, and was able to take off again because we still had rotor RPM. 
and uh, that's not the right way to do a touch and go. <laughs> so anyhow, I did move the clips around here. Uh, I originally had them out of sequence, and uh, we're over uh, Merced Municipal Airport here. December 18th was Monday. Uh, looks like we're swinging around here, and I think, well, I can see from the video clip coming up that we have uh, things back in the right sequence, so we'll see. We'll see. Anyhow, I'll be quiet for a second, and uh, I'll talk you through the next landing. flashing message you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen is telling me that I'm having a car vice problem, which is very possible, uh, although it's not very often that happens. And these particular carburetors, you can work that out real easy just by jiggling the throttles back and forth, and it pretty much de-ices them. Anyhow, uh, we're going to do a swing around here and come in for another landing. Uh, we're coming in at a 45 here. We're actually out of the air, uh, the correct landing pattern. I should be coming in from the other side, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to see how well this works out. Uh, also, I'll, I had to look at here the, the airspeed indicator is in kilometers per hour, so. Uh, Save me at first. Save me at first. Anyhow, coming in. Pull her up, 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 pull her up. Oop, not a bad landing. Didn't switch views here quick enough to see that you saw, but I really did have the nose wheel off the ground. So, now we're, uh, you notice the engine stops too. That's not realistic. The engine does not shut off automatically <laughs> when you touch down on the ground. Anyhow, we got the engine started again. We're attempting to start the engine. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Anyhow, we're out of sequence again here, so I'll see what's going on. Well, I just looked. Uh, it doesn't look like I can't figure out which, one, which clip's supposed to go here. Anyhow, we're back in the air. Uh, I can't tell exactly what we're doing. Looks like we might be headed. That's Lake Yosemite over there at 2 o'clock, so I'm not sure exactly what we're doing. I think we're doing a, a climb here. We'll put it up to the, to the big screen. Yeah. Actually, I can tell by the airspeed we're doing a slow, a slow flight here because we're way down in speed, so we're doing some sort of vertical ascent. Although I don't see it says we're climbing, so maybe we're doing a very slow power climb. Not sure what's going on here. Anyhow, I'll shut up for a minute until I figure out what's going on.
Okay, that beeping you can hear in the back there means that I'm heading south. I took off at uh, on runway 12, and I'm in the glide path headed south away from the airport. Uh, I think this is where I tested it to see uh, what the maximum altitude was that it can get to. But the ELA, that's one of the things. There's two things on the ELA that, that that's ELA being the ELA 07 ellipse, which is uh, my uh, dry plane simulator of choice that most closely mimics the Magni M16. Uh, it has two things that are a, uh, wrong, and that is one, it as far as engine RPM, which is really uh, redlined at 54, 5500 RPM, goes clear to 7000, and thus resulting in an airspeed of uh, in excess of 120, which I think I've clocked it a couple of times, and it's 126 or 27, which both are not realistic, won't work. Uh, if you ran the engine that high, you'd blow it apart and you'd never reach 126 miles an hour, even in the best uh, trimmed right propeller, blah, 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 unless you were in a dive on level flight, you'd never make 126 miles an hour. Anyhow, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, I did a, yeah, it shows me climbing. That's what I'm doing here, I'm climbing to see how fast, how high I can get. Not very high here. I'm only guessing I'm 2,200, 2,400 feet, maybe. Judging by the the rendering of the landscape below. Anyhow, uh, I'll shut up and look at it in big full screen so I can see the instruments.
Okay, uh, this was a climb test, and I did determine at this point that the airspeed indicators in kilometers. Uh, we were at uh, 9,000 something. We dropped back down. We're, uh, we're dropping down between 9 and 8,000. Uh, what you didn't see there was the uh, airport was right below us, and so I was, uh, I think what I do here is I uh, try to pull it back and slow it down and do a vertical ascent to get down to the runway. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, kind of foggy about what I was doing here, but I think that's what I'm doing. Anyhow, kind of looks like I'm descending. Can't, it's hard to see what I'm narrating. I have on, the, on a small screen, playback screen, and I can't really see the instruments as well as I'd like to. Uh, not sure. I'm way up there, though. I'm up at... Guessing 8,800 feet, which that would be about right. Uh, although it's not truly realistic. Although I did not check the altimeter on this one before we, I put it in the air to make sure that it was zeroed to the airport altitude. Uh, we are doing semi slow flights here. Maybe not. Maybe it's the, the Delta, or not the Delta, the wildlife refuge to the west of Merced. Yeah. Uh, yeah the other thing I'm not seeing here, at least on the screen I have displayed, is what my heading is. like my altitude is pretty much level right now. No, it's still dropping. Okay, here's where we cut the engine back and we're slowing the airspeed. It's slowly going back down. This is in kilometers, remember. So we're just kind of drifting here right now. Back the engines, I think off. No, it's not, but airspeed's back up to pretty much a nice glide ratio, around 100 kilometers, which is about 62 miles an hour, somewhere around there, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, 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 it's more like 60 kilometers, which would be, no, it would be almost a vertical drop from this altitude. Anyhow, I'll shut up here, we'll... We'll cut back in just before we land and see what we do there.
there we are. Uh, I have the engine throttle cut all the way back, just trying to lose all this altitude. It's kind of circling, slowly circling down to get down to where we're going to be able to put this baby on the ground. Uh, anyhow, uh, auto gyro MT03, not bad. Uh, could be used as long as you realize the differences between it and the real thing and uh, don't develop any bad habits by flying too many hours in the simulator, which uh, I try not to do. But in my efforts, really what I would ideally like to get is a real true-to-life MT or uh, not, not MT3 Magni M16 simulator that was as accurate as possible in relationship to the true the true uh, I may have this clip out of sequence too this doesn't look right but anyhow getting back to the M16 as true as a life to the M16 as possible which would be ideal. Although, if you really want to do simulator to learn to fly, you got to have a real simulator that gives you not only visual but tactical feedback. And we're talking more dollars than most people are going to spend. And also, uh, in real life, uh, you can do that spend it on real flight instruction and learn to do it the right way. Anyhow, it looks like this clip is out of order, but at this point I don't really care. Yeah, we're back up there higher than we were in the previous clip. But I'm just going to blab my way through this one and then we'll get down to the last two clips in this sequence, which is a full power off, no motor, no motor landing. And uh, pretty cool. And it's pretty realistic, actually. Uh, up here, know what to do. So anyhow, let me tell you a little bit about the simulator. It's uh, X-Plane 10.5.1, which is not the current version. The current version is 11. But you can still get 10.5.1. At least I was able to at the time, because 11 was out, and then I found the ELA 07 Ellipse. ELA is an, a gyroplane out of Spain. Uh, very similar to the Magni. Uh, also has a lot of similarities to this one we're flying right now, which is the uh, Auto Gyro MT-03, and that they both use pneumatic free rotors. And uh, the one advantage that the ELA has, in my mind, was it had the castering nose wheel, just like the Magni, which was what I wanted to practice with. So now we're down close to the ground, and I'll shut up here so you can hear that the engine's going to quit here, completely quit pretty soon. I don't know whether it ran out of gas, whether the carb ice that is complaining about the little blinking message that you can't read up in the upper right hand corner. But anyhow, it completely shut off here. And we did a true emergency landing because we had no motor. So we needed forward airspeed to put this thing on the ground correctly. So anyhow, it's about to come up here so I'll be quiet. You can hear that there is no uh, forward thrust engine.
so that's going to wrap it up for the M203. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up if you got nothing better. Uh, especially if you're flying an M203, you want it to be realistic, although I would still recommend using the ELA 07 Ellipse, the best thing out there. Okay, folks, this is the RAF 2000. Uh, there are a lot of these planes out there. Uh, let me explain right up front what the problem is. A, when you first start it up on the runway, the engine quits because the throttle isn't set high enough, so you end up having to restart the engine. Next thing you'll notice is along the left side there, the rotor tack is going over what a rotor would ever go. 490, 70, 90, never would go that high. And you can see it spinning like crazy here. Uh, if it were really tilted that far forward, we'd be pushing you backwards on the runway. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I'll point it out now, but I'll, it's also at the end. Uh, the uh, rotor brake, which is on the right side screen, is not manipulatable. You can't turn it on. You can't really shut the rotor, turn the rotor brake on. Uh, it does have a decent uh, free rotor, and uh, once it gets in the air, then the engine RPM reacts normally. 48, 4900 RPM, 5000 would be normal for this takeoff. Uh, but 2,670, 80, 90, 2,700 RPM on the rotor, no freaking way. So whoever did this one did a fairly nice job on the, the graphics, but they sure screwed up big time. Also, the coning on this one almost looks like a salad bowl. Would a blade really chrome that much? More like what you see right now, yeah, but it would it clone like it was, like this? No. So, anyhow, uh, other than that, it seems to fly pretty much like what I have seen in YouTube videos for RIFs, as far as has a fairly long takeoff roll. Uh, you don't jam it full forward like into an M203 or a Magni M16 to take off. There's more of a gradual takeoff till the nose gets light and a little bit more throttle, but you never really punch the full throttle until it lifts out of ground effect, uh, which is what I've seen in the videos. Uh, does it fly any... It's okay, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, tricky to learn to fly, like the real thing is. They do fly much different. Uh, as I understand it, they have a high thrust line, which means that it, uh, when you give her throttle, it pushes the nose over. When you let the throttle up, it pulls the nose up. Uh, at least that's what I've seen from the YouTube videos and heard from the commentary. Uh, fairly nice set of gauges, fairly nice artwork on this one. And, uh, it seems to fly pretty normal, other than the, the illusionary, imaginary a rotor RPM, 2300. <laughs> sure, 2100. Yeah. Uh, whoever did that had no idea. In other words, this is uh, to be sure. Even though it's it's fairly well done, if you have an RAF 2000 and you want to buy, you want to use it for flight simulation uh, in comparison to the real thing. You got some work to do in Model Maker to fix some of these things, like the rotor tachometer. Uh, I'd also fix the rotor brake, which is over on the little the red flap covered switch over there. Yep, so you can see it there for just a second. Anyhow, uh, seems to fly pretty stable once it's in the air. See here, we're going to come in for a landing, and we'll see how it lands. Uh, I've flown this one before. I had a hard time initially getting it to fly, but I didn't have much experience in the simulator either, and I kind of now know how to do it. So anyhow, we're coming in for a landing here, and we'll see.
see how we do. Not bad so far. Uh, airspeed's right where we want it. Obviously, I did because it landed okay. And uh, I don't know what we're doing here with we're pulling more throttle. Looks like we're shifting the throttle up. We're about 4200 on the RPM, so it's not quite yep. Trying to take off again. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty much how I've seen them on the YouTube videos take off, where they pretty much have to get in ground effect and really push to get this airspeed up to get them to take off again. Yeah, yeah, seems to be pretty realistic. Like I say, uh, if you have an RAF, this might not be a bad one for you to work with, but be aware that you're going to have to do some work on it. Uh, we're landing again here. Oop, kind of a hard landing, but any landing you can walk away from them. Anyhow, that's my review of the RAF. Not bad. Uh, well, I give it a thumbs up, thumb down, probably a thumbs up if you're going to be flying an RAF. If you're going to be flying something else, forget it. So, and stick to the real thing. Anyhow. That's all for now. Okay, one thing I do like about this particular sim is that it has the two pilots. Looks like the guy's checking his check right. Uh, the co-pilot there had a clipboard in his hand. Looked like he was checking him off. So, don't know what we're doing here, but maybe we're doing one more takeoff. But, now nah, we're taxiing off the strip. Going to Parker. There's a run-up area here. This is on the south end of the of uh, the runway at Merced, and there's a nice little run-up area here, which does really exist, I think. I've never really been out there myself. Not in a lot of years, anyhow, but hopefully soon. My airplane is about uh, the Benson, 1988 Benson, which is about to have the airworthiness flight testing done and then it will be in the air at this airport. So, anyhow, notice to the distance, I don't think it showed the people in there. Anyhow, we're going to shut her down. Let's see. Let's see here if we do that. I think we do. I think we roll her down and shut all the switch. Yep, we're shutting all the switches off. The lights shut off. I think we turn the key off. 
like I say, this is where you want a rotor brake. You'd want that rotor to stop. It doesn't look like there's any way you can lock the rotor. So I'd fix that if I was going to use this one. Okay, the last one I'm going to throw in here is one that just simply labeled in the explain.org forums where you can download stuff as test gyro and it is truly a test gyro a it's very difficult to fly once it's not difficult to fly it's difficult to get off the ground as you can see uh, it's a kind of a cute little gyro looks like Tweety Bird <laughs> uh, as you can tell, they look like they started off trying to use the dash background from uh, RAF and then uh, stuck their changes up here, floating in midair. Not a heads up to play, just that's, they put them there so they could see them. Uh, it almost flies, as you can see. Uh, one of those tricky ones to get off the ground although not impossible, as you will see. Anyhow, we'll give her another shot here. We're going to pre-rotate. And... I can't see where the road... Oh, there it is. It's over on the right side. So a lot of times what you have to do with these is get, them, get some forward movement to keep the rotor from whipping that plane around, so, which is what we did here. We started off with about 150 RPM. Once you get it in the air, it does fly. It doesn't fly realistically, though, because it will do tremendous airspeed, and it does things like barrel rolls, loop-de-loops, all of which, A, you wouldn't want to try, uh, and are next to impossible. Next to impossible. So anyhow, I think that's what I do here in a couple minutes. Uh, as a super responsive motor, I don't know what kind of power it's got. Yet. There you go. Here's a barrel roll. Rotor almost stalls. Doesn't though. Picks right back up again. Uh, could you do it in real life? If you knew exactly what you were doing and had the right setup, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I think I'd try to do a loop here, but I'm not sure. It's a cute little yellow, very simplistically designed, no pilot in it. Yep, there's another roll. And I think I try to do a loop here. I think you can do a loop. I've done it before when you're flying. When you've got the forward speed all the way up as high as it'll go. Yeah, that's what we're thinking we're going to try here. We're going to dive to build up some airspeed. Yep. And as you can see, it does a loop-de-loop, -loop, which again, never would happen for real. Because once you stall the blade, there ain't no way to pick up that RPM again. And then you just become planted in the ground like an old tree stump, only under the ground. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to let this roll. I don't know. Yeah, I do attempt to land at the end, so I'll let it roll through that, and we'll call this one, and then I'll put in, then I'll put in, yep, yep, then I'll put in, as I started to say, I'll put in the ELA-03 Ellipse, uh, which
which is what you really want because it's the most thing, it's the most realistic, the most true to really flying uh, an MT-03 or a Magnum 16. Uh, very realistic. I will warn you that when you go out and get it, it will not have uh, the correct plug-in that you need to download separately, and I'll put a link for that in the, the things below so you can know where to go find it. You have to put in an after thought. What happened was it was designed in 9, originally converted to 10, and along came 10.5.1, and the pre-rotor quit. And then the fellow that wrote it uh, came up with a fix where if you hold the stick completely forward, you can get it to pre-rotate and take off like a normal like a normal gyroplane. So anyhow, that's just so you need to know, but uh, I'll explain more about that when I uh, actually put the ellipse in here. So anyhow, we're swinging back around here, coming down, and I believe we're going to land. Uh, may or may not. Yeah, we're landing, but we're not landing at Merced. We're landing in a little private field to the south of Merced. Uh, do I land here? Don't think so. Anyhow, maybe I do, though. Maybe I do. Maybe I'm just swinging around here to get lined up with the wind. We'll see. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the comparisons, what... Uh, don't waste your time on. Some of these would actually hurt you if you uh, went to uh, use them to practice real landings. This one does land, as you can see. Landed out in the middle of nowhere. Actually got the head-ups display. And so much for the Tweety Bird cartoon-like. Uh, I we're going to pre-rotate here and take off. See uh, what happens. As far as takeoff goes, if you want to learn the tricks about getting the rotor RPM just right, you can do it. it takes off pretty quickly. Sort of takes off now. Miss attempt. Miss attempt. Try her again. You gotta have more forward airspeed than that to fly. So, what does this one get? You guessed it. Thumbs down. Okay, switching the view around here, checking to make sure that I'm facing the right direction of the wind, which it is coming from the south, which I don't think it really was that day, but who knows. Anyhow, <coughs> this is the ELA Ellipse 07. Uh, it does have a working pre-rotor, a rotor brake, uh, full instrumentations, including a GPS, fill pump that works, uh, all the controls you need to have in a real airplane are there, and this one does in fact take off fly normally just like a real gyro, very, very realistic. Uh, what I'm doing here is, uh, oh no, I know what I'm doing, I'm taxing at some ridiculously high speed rate down to the other end of the runway to get the Oops. I was trying to be fancy there and run on one wheel and see if I could, but you can see I crashed it. Anyhow, now we're back up here. Uh, we're going to high speed run clear down to the south end of the field, so we're going against the wind on takeoff. Uh, would you really run this fast down the runway? No. But I do have the rotor locked. I can just cut the throttle where it's coasted now. And we'll be coming up on the end of the runway, and we'll turn around and take off to the north on runway 30. So, anyhow, 
thousand foot mark there. Slowing her down. Yeah, we're coming up on the runway. You can see from the windsock that I, it's the reason I came down the center of the field, so I was taking off upwind instead of downwind. Try to do things as much by the rule book. This is runway 30, Merced Municipal Airport. Okay, first thing we do, uh, turn the extra fuel pump on, turn the rotor brake to flight position. It's a pneumatic rotor on the pre-rotor and rotor brake on this one. Uh, here we're starting pre-rotation. We pre-rotate to 200. Release the rotor uh, pre-rotor. Give it max throttle. It's exactly like you would do in a MT or a Magni M16. Get your ground speed up to about 60, 65. Although we're doing much faster here, but we should have left it off a little earlier there. Stay at ground to fat. Level off. Get to then start pulling out. And we're climbing about 500 feet per minute here. Again, this is my one of choice. This is the ELA-07S Ellipse. ELA is a Spanish gyro company, a uh, gyro plane company. Uh, been around just about as long as Magni has been around. Uh, very realistic. Because it does emulate the real thing. 
uh, right down to landing, probably have 450 hours of this particular one. Most of it uh, landing practice. Has improved my landing practice in the real thing. I am taking real flight training to get my sport pilot license and uh, would highly recommend it. Runs on a Mac or a PC. Uh, not sure whether it runs in uh, X Plane 11, how it works may work just fine, but since I already own and have paid for X Plane 10.5.1, playing with flight simulators because I like to play with flight simulators, which I really don't. In fact, I, I didn't for years, uh, from the early days when I had a Mac Plus and a early Mac, uh, Microsoft flight simulator, uh, which was pretty realistic back in the days, depending on the judging by the had a whole 12 megahertz CPU, and it was fairly realistic, especially for a small fixed wing. Anyhow, uh, no guarantee this will run in 11. Uh, if anybody does, please leave a note in the comments somewhere and bomb below and tell me how it works. Like I say, I will put the link in for the um, the fix for the pre-rotor to make it work in 10.5.1. If you have an older simulator, like a 9, it will run just fine. Uh, although you can't as far as I know, download 9 or purchase it now. Not even sure whether they're still selling 10.5.1, so you may be forced to buy 11 and take your chances. So, uh, if I had an extra 50 bucks to throw around, I might buy 11 and upgrade to it and see if it worked. But I'm perfectly happy for my purposes with what I've got here. Anyhow, I'm going to shut up and we'll see what else we do here. As you see, this thing does fly pretty good land's pretty good. Can you wreck it? Yeah, you can wreck it. Uh, you, can, like, you can wreck anything if you do stuff stupid. Like uh, I did at the beginning of this segment where I was trying to balance on one wheel going 75 miles an hour down the runway. Not a good idea. Wouldn't do it in real life. But just playing. Anyhow, we're coming back around here we're going to uh, we're going to uh, I don't know what we're doing we're landing I guess uh, cruise along here about 70 miles an hour slightly declining at about 300 feet uh, we're, oh we're up at Castle that's where we're at here Yeah, we're up at uh, Castle here. This is coming into Castle. Castle is uh, an XB-52 base. Now it does commercial, mostly support for um, California firefighters. Uh, does have a control tower. Has an 11,000 plus foot runway. So you can fly a long ways on this one. I'm just flying straight down the runway here. Probably, yep, just flying along and slow over the runway, coming down, running about 20 feet off the runway. Whoops, touchdown. I don't know whether that was intentional or not. Running off the side of the field, doing a little lawn mowing here. Picked up the speed, took off again, get back over the runway. I think I do a couple of touch and goes here. Take off. 
does have some realistic power. Could you do this in real life? Uh, if you were damn lucky and had a good guardian angel, maybe. If you ran off the field like that, I guarantee you at least blow a freaking tire. Back over the runway again. As you say, 11,000 feet, you get a lot of You can do a lot of touch and goes at 11,000 feet. Uh, and yeah, I highly recommend this particular one. We're at the end of the runway here. Yes, not quite touchdown. Gonna give it some some gasoline throttle. Fly back around. We'll fly over here. Land on the landed on the runway here, or on the tarmac, I should say. Uh, I end this one with a lot of times I'll come in and land on the tarmac coming from the south, pull off on the side street, go over and park on somebody's driveway, pretending it's my house that lives on the base. But there are no houses on the base. Uh, a lot of barracks. But the way the uh, X-plane landscape is, it's not true to life, doesn't show the control tower, the FPO, uh, the multitude of, of hangars that are there. Some very large since there was a B-52 base. Uh, taken off again here, going south on the runway, which we actually took off downwind, but that's okay. That kind of speed you can take off downwind. These are the old uh, parking staging areas on the north end of the tarmac where they used to park all the B-52s. Now you'll see over here, these are the houses not here these are outside the base well I guess they're on the base but I don't know if they really exist or not anyhow this little strip of houses here this is, this is some of the barrack building they do show right here are these multi-story buildings and right there about nine o'clock is where the little houses are no it's more about two o'clock anyhow anyhow you'll see yeah there's the, the barracks I'm sorry ahead of myself. There's the houses where I pull off and on that paved road there and taxi over and park in there and pretend like it's my house. And those would be on the base if this were real. And this is where we this is where we come in uh, as I was starting to say this is where we come in and land on the tarmac actually right in front of the where the terminal would be, and be on that big slab there, and we go down the little access road next to the fire department, and then we uh, taxi down the, the streets. And as you will see, we park at my imaginary house in my imaginary little strip I have next to the house. You have to watch for cars here. I'm going to stop and uh, stop the rotor so we got it pointed fore and aft. Uh, rotor brake on. Air pressure up. Pneumatic rotor brake. Pretty slick. About 50% of the time actually stops at fore and aft. Which, yep, we got lucky this time it did. A lot of times it parks at crossways. You have to jigger it around to get it to come up. Anyhow, so getting adjusted, uh, adjusted here, shut the extra fuel pump off, got a taxi over to this little house and park. Uh, like I say, you gotta watch for cars. So as you come up to the cross street, you take a look left and look right. Oops, there was a car coming. Yep, let him go by, take off. As they say, it's more dangerous to drive your car than it is to fly an airplane, or in this case a gyroplane. Coming up on another intersection here. Whoop, the car. See, I tell you, these guys are crazy. They drive like crazy. Don't even see ya. It's like riding a motorcycle. You gotta pay attention. Anyhow, 
he's going to turn the other way. Although he didn't have a turn signal on. Damn civilian drivers. Anyhow, this is a nice little house that I imagine I really bought. It has a nice little strip next to it to park your RV, or in my case, this nice ELA 07 gyroplane. And the uh, only bad thing is i got to put some blacktop on it because it's dirt right now, and you'll see what happens. Pisses the neighbors off all the time. So, yep. A little dusty, a little dusty. Yep, 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 yep. Pull up a little bit further here. Yeah, we're good to go. And so now we need to shut down the rest of this thing. Okay. And... Mags off, masters off. Actually, the mags didn't go there. The engine, now the engine shut down. Let the dust settle. And that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this comparison. See you next time. That's all, folks.